Freedom and beauty to everyone. I am the Technomage and welcome to my review of Amazon The Rings of Power episode 6. Where is he? And I know, I know, I know I am late with this review again, but can you blame me? This episode was a mess. It went everywhere. Every single character that ever appeared on this series had its five minutes on the screen trying, quote unquote, to advance their plot. But honestly, well, in a similar way to the previous episode, almost nothing happened. But at least in this episode, the plot advanced, but just one step. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's get to it. We begin with Aaron Deer, who fights Orts and discovers their rally point for for the siege of Eregion. Meanwhile, in Eregion, Elebrimbor is having trouble. Trouble with the rings, trouble with his materials, trouble, trouble with his assistance, trouble with himself. He's extremely agitated and distracted and obsessed with, with his work. And this is due to Sauron feeding his obsession and playing on his insecurities and his uh, and his ego that he has to create the rings and create something wonderful and unique. Now, Sauron is the de facto ruler of Eregion. Meanwhile, Galadriel, after she was captured by Arak and his Uruk, Brief time in your capture. They are having this long conversation about about the past, about Sauron and Morgoth, and that he wants he, he needs to form, an to form an alliance with Galadriel to defeat Sauron, but she tells him nothing yet. She still refuses to acknowledge any kind of responsibility in this whole situation. By the way, this scene, this conversation lasted for like five minutes straight. And they did nothing, they just talk. Meanwhile, back in Numenor, Elendil is being trial for treason for not accepting Arpharason's rule and the whole fight on the temple with And do you accept Arpharason as Numenor's true king? Who resulted in the death of one of his former subordinates. Meanwhile, it tells us things. And there will not be another. The Tell me what I Wizard is still talking with Tom Bombadil about how to control his magic and how to get a a, a staff. Meanwhile, Nori and Poppy are still with the stewards and Poppy got herself a boyfriend. And honestly, this was cute. It was lovely. In my opinion, this was the highlight of the episode because the rest is boring. And honestly, this actually got nowhere anyway. Because they still haven't decided how they are going to take the, the stores back with the Harfoots and fulfill the prophecy and build the Shire. Meanwhile, Tom Bombadil leaves the, the wizard in this area filled with dead wood so he can fight his stuff and he leaves finally he's done with this with this rubbish meanwhile back in Casadum, the king is getting more and more wholehearted and and greedy due to the influence of the ring and i mean uh, Sauron, in the guise of Anadar, went to Casadun asking for help, that they need more mithril to create more rings, and that the orcs are going to soon attack and they will need their help. And the king says no. Why? So they can come back. And they can ask for more. And he even has a Golum, my precious moment of the ring, that he doesn't want to part with it, and he's so far gone that he uses the power of the ring to strike his own son. 
the dwarf on that throne is not your father. He Meanwhile, back in Numenor. See. And I begged. Faithful. They they are still like delaying this. Elendil has this conversation with his daughter and Queen Miriel. But meanwhile, back in Casadun, Disa and Durin are trying to prevent the dwarves from keep uh, mining Mithril. Meanwhile, back again in Numenor. Why can't they just do these scenes in one go? Why the, this annoying back and forth? Well, Miriel decides that since Elendil committed his crimes in her name, she's the one who should be on the trial. And what is the trial? On this place, there is the... Like a bastion of of human enlightenment. Is does this gigantic sea snake eat you or not? Well, it doesn't. And this gives legitimacy to her rule as. And we are done with them. And back in Eregion, Galadriel finally gives away something and tells him who is Sauron. Unlock me, and that gives us my kind and yours. Every kind in there. Yeti. Or never to return. Will your high king permit us to return to overcome all elven dogs? But this gets honestly nowhere because they, again, they, they are just talking about how they go back and back and forth and how this is all, all this whole place on Sauron's plan. And uh, honestly, I don't know. I, I don't know what they are talking about because. This whole conversation was supposedly to for others to form an alliance with the elves. So they can both attack and destroy Sauron. But in the end, he doesn't listen to her. Because she realizes that maybe this is what our Saurons want. This is all of part of her of his of his plan i mean galadriel is finally starting to see something and now that she is talking to other other is not listening to her to her and back in the region i finally I finally realized that there is a veritable legion of a, a horde of orcs amassing right at the other side of the river. The elves go into full bloody panic. I mean, they are running around like chickens with their heads cut off. This is not how elves behave. The elves in Tolkien's Legendarium, they are serious. They are always calm and collected and cool because they are old. They have Years and years and years of experience in life. I mean, the youngest child on this city is probably a thousand years old. But here we have them behaving like humans. And meanwhile, Alebrimbor is still having problems with the rings. And now he finally notices that there's something wrong. But when he goes outside, Sauron uses an illusion to make him, make him think that everything is alright. And he ju should just focus on the rings and his legacy but this is an illusion and look at this there is no order at all the elves the bloody elves these beings that are so enlightened and wise they panic like humans and of course this is all pla Sauron's plan to the last minute detail And that is the end of the episode. Like, oh, seriously. As I said, boring episode. There is just too much going on. And I mean, too much. I mean, every single character, as I said, has its five minutes on screen to, to advance their own individual subplots. 
but at, in the end they accomplished nothing. They none of them advances at all. I mean, I think the only the only plots that took one step forward were the Numenorians, with Queen Miriel being restituted to her throne, I think, and the Siege of Eregion. But I mean, the Siege of Eregion, we had that the Uruks were amassing outside Eregion at the beginning of the episode, and they launched their first attack at the end of the episode. And this episode is one hour long. What are they doing with the time, with the rhythm of this series? This, this episode was so bloated with content, and at the end, at the same time, it was so de almost so devoid of content. There was so much going on, and they accomplished oh, they accomplished almost nothing. But uh, why am I? What am I complaining? This is episode seven of the second season. I should be used to this low quality narrative. This is the Technomage signing off. Thank you for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.